Yeah, so I have the fortunate position of the senior lecturer at Newton Rigg. Uh, we have as a large residential cohort of students um, from all, all around sort of UK, um, Scotland, as far down south, south of England. So um, yeah, really, really sort of diverse sort of group of students. Newton Rigg is one of the centres of Ask and Bryan College. Uh, it was taken over a number of year, years ago, and since then, yeah, there's been um, a good bit of investment. Uh, and again, that means we're very, very fortunate to have the resource we have, such as the Grousemen and things like that. Again, that's all come about from the take from Ask and Bryan. So um, yeah, it's, it's really, really good. Uh, our student numbers are increasing. Um, our course here has been going 23 years. So my predecessor, Malcolm Ryden, uh, was here 22. Um, and I'm just my first stint here, first year in. So Wet Sled of Grousemere, uh, which the college have, was taken over about four years ago. And yeah, it, it's a resource that's um, used every day uh, with the students. Uh, we have a, a full-time keeper down there, Tony Williams, who's great. Um, who's a really keen bird ornithologist, uh, an all-round good keeper. Really. So yeah, the students get a really good uh, overall sort of knowledge from him. Um, they get to do all the snaring down there, the pest control, trapping, we do heather burning, so they get to become paramaniac for a few weeks, which is which they really, really enjoy. And again, we have students that have never been on a grass run before. We have students from Lincolnshire and Sussex and places, so they've never stepped foot on heather ever. Uh, and, and again, very, very quickly, they find that they're integrated with that on a weekly basis. So our estate skills, or so fencing, ditching, uh, grouse put building, again, they, they get fully submerged in it, uh, which is what the industry require really. So yeah, it's, it's a great thing. And ultimately, we get to shoot the grouse as well, uh, which so the students actually learn how to manage the grouse. Again, there is a high percentage that have been on grouse moor, but then there's also a percentage that have never ever done it, and they're a completely different beast, uh, as people know. Um, the driving and just the sheer vast ground you've got to take in to make a day happen. I don't think they fully appreciate it. So it's really, really good. Um, yeah, and we get to see how fit they are very quickly, because they've got to start striding out uh, on wet sleddle. The, the site we have at uh, Wetzland is, is quite a sensitive one, so um, <clears throat> there's a percentage of treble SI, uh, it's actually shared with United Utilities, so, um, so the conservation and habitat management is going to be really sensitive. Uh, we have really restricted the amount of burning we can do, um, but that's gone through all the students, we've shown them the burning plan, they actually helped create it and work with us. Uh, and we give, them, we give them the merits. Um, wet sleddle, by its very nature, and its name is very, very wet, so the, the heather grows very, very slow. So we actually go through why you couldn't just go and blanket burn it, <clears throat> and the merits, we've got some bits of ground we actually border with other areas uh, that aren't managed for keeping. And we actually get to see there's a sort of three-way cross-sectional view. One where there was no heather burning at all, no shooting, it's all sheep, and it's just like a bowling green, there's nothing there. There's one bit that's um, a bit of a reserve where uh, there's no keeping done and a little bit of habitat management in the form of cutting. And heather's sort of one monocultural age. And then we've got our bit, which we actually you can see all the burn strips through, and we have a grouse population, and none of the three do. But we also have uh, stone chats, lapwing, curlew, oyster catchers, and all kinds of things. Um, again, we're out just lamping myself and Tony the night, and we had five um, shorted owls flying around. Uh, we have kestrels. Um, again, we have a harry that visits every now and again. And it's all really important that students realise that it's not just the grouse. And I think it's, that's a lot of the public perception. It's all we do is produce grouse. And yes, we do do that, but on the back of that, the biodiversity is absolutely fantastic and it's something that's really important, we, um, um, a big message we drive home with students. The students have access to the gun room at Newnrig, um, they get to bring their own guns, we've got a selection of our own college guns that we use for firearms training, uh, shotgun, uh, we have a sort of weekly clear pigeon competition um, and attend sort of a college competition so they get all that but then they also get to bring their own gun for their own social use so um, end of year so shoot dates, invites that they inevitably get from so, um, getting pally with the people from the country, they end up sort of whizzing off and getting a, a beaters day here, there and everywhere. And ultimately they get one on our place as well, so uh, we actually have a, a woodcock shooting grey stock that they, if, we're, if stocks are sufficient they get to have a day in there, um, but then they also get to have a day on here as well at the partridge. Um, and if they're very, very lucky, uh, they might have a go to grouse if uh, on a good year. So, but Another great resource we've got uh, is, is the kennels. Uh, these are exclusively for our gamekeeping students, uh, which allow um, 16 students to bring up to two dogs each. Uh, these dogs, uh, again, are used and utilised on our shoots, on the grouse mare, on our driven partridge shoot. Uh, but also, uh, we do a subject called um, gun dog training. So they get to bring all their well-trained field trial champions that they've spent all the money on. Uh, yeah, and they get to sort of learn how to how to train them really, um, but in a practical environment. So we can teach in the classroom. We then say, right, get your dogs, lads and lasses, and actually get to go in the field and actually just try that exactly what they've done. On our right hand side, uh, in this little gill, everything on the left hand side, um, 
after these trees is all is all um, comes under our, sort of, our lease and our sort of jurisdiction. So, um, but it formally it's a much bigger lump of ground that our keeper actually covers. So he covers about sixteen thousand acres in total, sort of the pest and predator control. But our lump is about five thousand. So, um, and the, but that's actually the mainstay of the header as well. We just saw our first grouse shoot off there. Yeah. So it's yeah. Quite nice considering we've just got them all. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, cock grouse, and he's he's not gone so far. So he's obviously got his got a brood, somewhere, a brood like somewhere, which is good. Yeah. yeah. So the shoot day is September the 20th, about a month ago, about a month away now, and you were saying that uh, all of the beaters and everyone on the day is uh, your students. Yeah, so yeah, it's a uh, baptism of fire, they all arrive. Yeah, it's, got, it's quite so, amazing though, isn't it? Like to actually be able to do that for your students to say, look, like you were saying, some of them haven't even been on the grouse Never, before. no. Right, today we're, today we're going <laughs> grouse shooting, guys. You're walking yeah. up that hill, you're taking your dogs with you. and Yeah, yeah I mean, it's great. I mean, they, they do get a little bit of prior warning, so we, yeah. we, we yeah. do tell them that we, we set up send all the shooting yeah, out. But, but yeah. pretty much, yeah, it's the arrive and it's literally the first week, yeah. it's, we, Sort of teach them one what a grouse is because again someone won't know yeah, and then and then grouse. but then we start getting them out and start chatting about we sort of yeah. formulate a team to say right who's going to flank yeah, yeah. first who's going to yeah. pick up so we try and establish That's who's brilliant. got good dogs and really good so yeah it's a it, it, it helps when because they're brand new they don't they've never yeah. met each other yeah. before yeah. so yeah. the fact they've all got to pull together so quickly within a week to, do a massive to then deliver a day here ones. a day back at college yeah. it's, a, it's a massive undertaking yeah, it so really it, it formulates these friendships really quickly yeah, much yeah. quicker than other places because instantly got common ground because they, yeah, they have <laughs> they've to they've got no yeah. choice but that's nice and it's nice that the college can do that for the kids and yeah i'm really really excited about coming to it's, it's gonna be a spectacle when, day with you. When, when you sat there and you've got this huge the great line of, of children it, it, it really is yeah, yeah um all that cracking the flags and hopefully it's gonna be a nice day as well so yeah you can have a minimum an absolute minimum of 40 students all striving that which is again it's fantastic that is really good yeah it's, and it's for me i mean i'll be um this sort of you've hosted this i'll be hopefully trying to spend a little bit of time each of you on the day yeah, and again exactly. for me when i sort of see them students come over it's it's it's, it's brilliant it makes the job it's why it. you do it yeah, yeah. it's because yeah. it's it's boots on the ground stuff uh, it's hands on yeah. it's exactly what they want to be doing they wouldn't have it any other way yeah. you mentioned briefly about the fact that this had at one point historically been overgrazed but yeah. already as you can see you know, you've you've got the sort of the the heathers and stuff like the the young heathers already coming back. Through, yeah, you they? can. Yeah, yeah, you can see. And again, and, and this is all over. It, it's the the shot the shot of sheep were really sort of taken off after foot and mouth. Right. Uh, okay. And that had a big impact. But then that, from then on, so a good ten years. And yeah, it's a good already, ten years. Yeah. And since then, the the grazing has been far more managed. Um, the sort of sheep's adding, and you, and you can see everywhere you look, it's there's, there's very little overgrazing on any bit yeah. of our ground. But yeah. then you go to some boundaries, a very boundary, especially with the Lake District, where there's a lot of overgrazing. Yes. And you just you get can, the it's just, grasses like this it, everywhere. It, it's, it's a blanket yeah. of yeah. just yeah, very short grasses. You won't get all this diversity at all. Yeah. And ultimately, the sheep will end up sort of breaking all the mosses up, and then just causing more erosion. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really careful management. The grouse keeper's role is 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 some is some more varied than just grouse. It's yeah. the fact that you'd have to know about all this, and again, it it would surprise a lot of people that aren't involved. Definitely, which, which is great. Yeah, I mean, we, we're very much a. I, I, I don't want to say that we aren't going to be called gamekeeper in the future, but I think we've got this sort of bit of a cliche wildlife manager. I think yeah. I think it's it's far more integral. And we're doing far more for biodiversity. Than we ever have done in the past. Yeah. The conservation crops we put in, the way we manage the heather. Yeah. We're going to be there's so many more species benefit yeah. than just a game bird. I, mean, so. it's, it, I think it's one of those things that if if it wasn't for that, it'd be something that one, it'd be something that the people who aren't specifically um, involved with grouse shooting would pick up on, and we need to be doing as as much as possible to make sure that everything that we do is completely textbook, it's done for the books, and as much for the benefit of everything all of the species right, exactly. as much as the grouse yeah. yeah exactly yeah so and we always teach there's law and there's best practice and we try and teach that everything, and, yeah, and above best. and yeah, so, you, so yeah. you're always one step ahead we need to be future proof and, and okay you're saying to them sort of my generation what we did right or wrong in that era has an impact on what we ha we couldn't have and yes. the lads and lads have got now whatever they do right and wrong has an impact on their sons and daughters and the next generation yeah, so yeah. it's just sort of future proofing if we want to keep doing what we're doing and it keeps me employed new employed yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and and thousands more yeah. we've got to be sensible and exactly yeah i really appreciate you showing us around today and it looks fantastic and i cannot wait to shoot with you on september the 20th i'm really looking forward to I appreciate it that. thank you very much, thank you very much. All right. cheers, cheers. <laughs> my name's Curtis Moss at the head of the gamekeeping department. It's my responsibility to keep this rabble sort of on the straight and narrow today and stop getting lost in the fog, hopefully. Uh, the other person you've hopefully met is Tony Williams, who's the keeper at Shap here. 
So again, he's the very patient man that's got about 35, 36 beaters today. Um, some of these students have only stepped ahead of once before in their lives, and that was this week when he arrived. So a little bit of patience uh, on our part, I think, as guns. It's really important for us as a college that we include students in everything. It's a part of everything we do, uh, which is why we give them a massive responsibility for looking after such a day like this. So again, just enjoy your day. Uh, the students are certainly going to enjoy the day, and hopefully the weather's going to be good. And lastly, just I really want to have fun. I really do. Okay, enjoy the moment. Enjoy the thing that the students are there. I think we're unique in the country that we've got 37 students striding out the heather for the first time doing a grouse day. No one else can do that. So it's, it's really special for us as staff, for Matt and Anthony, and I want it hopefully to be equally special for you guys as guns today. Any questions, please just do fire them at me, or Matt, or Anthony on the day. Right, chaps, if you get yourselves kitted up, we're going to head up this track here. So if you try and condense it as few vehicles as you can, please, that'd be much appreciated. Hello and welcome to the Game Map of Britain. Today you join me with the team from Newton Rigg College near Penrith and today we're going to be shooting some driven grouse. What's amazing about the day today is we've got all of the gamekeeping students here from Newton Rigg College and it's all of the team and the lecturers and the students from three years here at Newton Rigg College who are going to be putting on this incredible day's grouse shooting for us. So this is an absolute privilege to be with that team and those students, some of which have never set foot on a grouse moor today, shooting some driven grouse. Starting the day in butt six, and there is 10 guns shooting today, so it's quite a long line. As you can see, it's quite foggy, and we don't have that much visibility in front of us. So, the students, the gamekeepers on the Newton Rig uh, gamekeeping courses, they're a good way up in front of us, and they're going to be pushing the birds down the hill towards us. And as Curtis, one of the senior lecturers, has just told us, what's going to be happening is the birds are going to be coming probably down this hill, so there's two or three guns up this way. The rest of my guns are to my left and we're going to be taking hopefully some shots in front like that but also as soon as we've had a shot in front if the birds make a break behind us we can then shoot the birds behind so it's a real exciting day i'll pick up a bird there so the fog's clearing a little this this is this is a perfect little grouse gun because it's so tight and so so compact and so pointable you can just really wave it around I, I just love the fact that even the screws have so much detail in them beautiful little gun We must have seen a dozen different short-eared owls on that drive and we've got some great footage of them up in the sky and to see that much wildlife on one of these days is fantastic. We've had all sorts of flying past us. There's been a lot of grouse up the far end, not many grouse where I am, uh, but we did get one or two up in front which is quite nice. With the fog like this, they don't they lose their orientation of things and they don't they can't quite figure out where they're going. So just like that big pack there, they came up the hill, saw the fog, went into the fog, freaked out a little bit, went higher and then went back down again. They sort of lose the bearings completely. There's a lot of flagging going on up there. Without 
not spending too much time explaining what's happening. The, there's grouse at the top of this hill here and there's a few grouse over there. The flankers are still lined out over this way, but the beaters are still about half a mile away and they're slowly but surely, they know there's a lot of grouse there, so they're just slowly but surely pushing ones and twos back over the gun line. This is the prize of the day. This is a, a cockbird, red grouse, beautiful bird. Probably a couple of years old now, as you can see by its wing feathers and feet. But yeah, they're a go gorgeous bird. And that is, I wouldn't say prime eating, a lot of people like the young birds, but for me, take the breasts off, do something with the legs, or pan ro or, or oven roast them. They're an absolutely incredible eating bird. And, and as I said, these are the ones we're after. These is a single cockbird flew through the line. We knew it was an old bird, it was by itself. These are the best ones to take out, leave the young ones for next year and we'll crack on. Flankers are going to be coming out from those butts, Maybe. sort of up where we've walked. But I just want to make sure they know that where we've stretched to, and then there'll be another one, just more or less on the region two of us, that further that way. Right. So you like to keep your eyes open. If I see any coming this way, I'll give you a shout anyway. Right. But if you see any coming here, give them plenty of flag, because we want to push them down there as far as possible if we can. I'll come just onto the top, just beyond where you are now. Uh, so, if you drop one man off about 80 yards beyond there, right out beyond that far horizon, and then they're going to swing it down and round, and we're going to bring all this ground in below us down over those butts. I've been coming on here since 1984 as a beater, and uh, worked here for nine years, but they used to do this, the whole of this ground here, what we're doing now, plus the one that we did before lunch, all as one drive, and you used to have to push all the top in and all the bottom up and take it through those butts. Uh, the butts that we're going to now, they only used to shoot those one way and I made them so you could shoot them two ways so we can split this big drive in half. Well, the easy, we used to have to go down the butts and walk all the way out along the wall and right round that back. But I find it a lot easier to line the beaters right across the middle and just swing it round in one. It's quicker, it's easy for the beaters and just as effective. Just come down a little bit on that way. Tony to Sam, I've just stopped uh, the ones uh, to your right that are over the knoll because I can't see the man on the top and they were probably just going to push down a little bit too far. Flag up, flag up! Flag up, flag up! Stand still. 
No, you're all right. Just keep coming in the middle. Well, that was an incredible day shooting and a true privilege to be invited along to shoot with this team. Grouse have become a passion of mine. It's been a fantastic journey to see the Newton Mig students truly thrive in their environment. Congratulations to all involved. I hope to be back next year. Our next instalment showcases the day's high bird shooting at Plasden and with Bettersall Sporting Estates. Watch out for some familiar faces and our incredible aim cam footage. <laughs>